Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Friday night in the shop. How you guys doing? I'm uh, I'm doing super well. Uh, really good work week. Uh, did a big custom job and got that all taken care of. And uh, just like that, our first week back to work is over. Uh, I was off during the Christmas break and now it's back to uh, sheet metal and getting her done. Hope you guys had a great week and uh, hope everybody's doing well. So I was driving home today and uh, I've had a lot of questions lately about auto-tune saws, whether it be the, the Husqvarna uh, auto-tune or the still M-Tronic. A um, lot of questions about that. So I am not, I am not an auto-tune expert guys. I, and to tell you the truth, I don't know much about it. I kind of understand how it works, but I'm far from an expert. But when you guys ask me questions, I'll tell you what I think based on what I know. And uh, I have absolutely, I'm trying to think. Oh, I have run a still M-Tronic saw. It was an MS441. Was super unimpressed with it. Um, the saw idled funny. It was hard to start. I don't know if it's just that saw or if it was... Uh, if that's how the M-Tronics run or some of them, I don't know. But uh, I remember running that M-Tronic and thinking, I don't like this saw. So just going to put my hood down here so you guys can see me. So uh, on that level, I had an experience with these self-tuning saws and I went, I, I, I don't like this. It's not for me. Uh, most of you that hang around on my channel and to the newcomers, welcome. You, there's newcomers coming in all the time. Um, but those of you that have been around... I tend to like the old saws, you know, uh, 80s, 90s. I go back to the 70s when they really started figuring it out. But I do run newer saws. So I want to talk about tonight, because, you know, it's Friday night in the shop, yakking about the week's events. I kind of want to go over my thoughts on M-Tronic and Auto-Tune. Now, like I said, I've never owned a still M-Tronic saw. Um, not, not for lack of a reason. I just never have had one. Um, so, but I have some auto-tune saws here. Uh, these are two 550 XP Mark 1s, my good old 562, and this is a 576 XPG. Um, I got this one, ugh, in spring maybe. And honestly, guys, I haven't put many miles on this thing. Um, I have run it here and there, but, uh, it seems to be spending a lot of time on the shelf. I don't know if that's a sign of whether I like it or not, or I just have too many power saws. It's probably I have too many power saws. So I'm going to pull this out soon and, and do some more work with it. Uh, I like this saw. It's not a 372. It's completely different. It's hard to compare the two. Um, this one's a little heavier than a 372, but in my opinion, it brings more power to the game. So, um, so let's first start Mtronics. How do they start? Okay, this thing's been sitting for four, five, six months, guys. I'm not kidding. Okay. Uh, pull the choke out here. Just going to make sure the camera's low enough so you guys can see what I'm doing. Here, bring you down here. Okay, I've pulled the choke. This thing is, is cold. Uh, it's got fuel in it, I believe. Let's push the decomp like a normal person would. Let's start this power saw. first gen auto-tune saw. Um, first thing, that was four pulls and it fires. Uh, it'll keep going with the choke on, you put the choke off. Um, this thing is ready to go right now. Touching the throttle, it's zippy right off the hop cold. So, um, that's a good thing. 576, this is one of those saws you either love it or hate it. This one has the primer bulb. Um, usually push it six or seven times. I have a lot of experience with this saw. Um, you pull it up and out and up to put the choke on. Okay, let's try this saw. How does it start? Again, this thing's freezing cold. You guys can see my breath in here. 
Um, this temperature, if a saw's not going to start, it'll be like this. Because typically a saw is a little lean in this. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four. Okay, see this saw, guys? Okay, we can't start these two because they're blowing up. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to bring you guys up a little bit higher. Now, so, you guys see that, and it's, again, these things are stone cold. Oh, uh, this one I ran a week or two ago, I'm always running this saw. Again, this one's, you know, and again. I actually like the controls on these, just push it down. Okay, so uh, I've, I've had you guys say, oh, I don't like the thought of those auto-tunes, uh, etc. And I've also had some of you guys are curious. So, let's start with the 576. Uh, I have a decent amount of 576. I blew my first 576 up, guys. Uh, it's in a bin there. Um, grenaded. Uh, wrist pin, sir clip, let go. But, I had all kinds of carburation issues with that saw. Wow, it's cold in here. What do we got here, guys? It's just below freezing. It's really humid today, but um, I had a lot of carburation issues with that with that saw, guys. Um, it would go lean randomly. Now that was a non-auto tune saw. It had good power. I wouldn't say it was better or worse than a 372, but uh, after having that saw, it left a bad taste in my mouth to the point it's in a bin there, and I've never rebuilt it. Um, and I have a brand new piston for it and, you know, uh, all kinds of goodies that I could just rebuild that saw. But I was like, eh, you know. So, 576s, love them or hate them, it's one of those saws. Uh, my first one I didn't like. This one, from the amount I've used it, this one's awesome. This one's got all kinds of power. I did do a muffler mod to it. And uh, this one's auto-tune and it has heated handles. Um, this is a non-heated wrap. If I was going to use this a bunch in the winter, I'd put the heated handle on with the switch here. But, uh, this one here starts like you guys just saw. Um, cold usually, if I've run it lately, it'll start like two poles and it's certain idles and it's ready to go. I still warm it up, but, uh, I've had no problems with this saw. Um, another thing, do they run lean? Now... Because I've just run this, this might not be a good test, but let's pull the spark plug off on this and see what the plug looks like. Um, see if there's any signs of this saw running lean. These are super, super easy to work on too, guys, these 576s. I like them. Oh, here. Yeah, it's wet, but you can see this plug was. Let's see if we can get this to focus here. Here, I'll put the light on for you guys. This plug was golden brown. See that? So there you go. Um, this one was already blown up once. Uh, my buddy rebuilt this. Hey man, how's it going? I think he watches. Um, my buddy rebuilt this saw and I, I traded him for it. Because I was curious. Um, I didn't want to... I didn't want to make my mind up about these 576s. I'm not happy with all that plugs going in there, guys. I didn't want to make my mind up about these 576s until I tried another one. Um, any saw can be bad. Anyhow, I'll just put this plug back in here. There we go. Always better safe than sorry. You hate to pull threads out. Uh, my buddy rebuilt this. This is an OEM Husqvarna build piston cylinder. Okay, so let's move on to this bad boy. What does this look like? Does this saw run lean? Now, first thing I did to this saw, or this saw guys, there's normally a cover like right here, okay? I cut all this out to let it breathe more. The new ones have a hole here, okay? So, um, 
This saw is modified. I hear this air filter is terrible. Hey, look, guys. You can see, I always hear from guys, I always hear from guys that these air filters are terrible. Look at all the dust in there, okay? I'll turn the light on. Let's see. We got no secrets here. There is, I just see fuel glistening in there. I see no fines. So I read all the time that these things have terrible air filtration. I haven't, I have not experienced that with this saw guys at all. Um, actually the contrary, um, this thing runs good and it runs clean um, with all this dust and dirt. Other than that guys, this saw stock, I do have a muffler mod. So again, uh, just in the, in the name of being honest, I like to be an honest fellow. This saw is not stock, it's stock enough though for me. This saw here, for an auto tune, um, again, this saw was blown up when I got it. I rebuilt it before I had the channel. I've had this saw for several years. I've put a lot of time on it. You guys can see, um, good way to tell a five series. Look at the clutch cover. See, see the color of it. See how it's all, that's from getting hot. Okay. So this saw, this saw runs like a top. Now I will say though, when you run it in different temperatures, this one, this one's not bad. This one's not picky. This is a series two auto tune. This is a series one. This has no diagnostic port. This one you can plug in. Um, this one has the newest carburetor available. Uh, I can't remember which one it is. EL 48. It's one of you guys out there might know. I can't remember at this point. This, this saw has all the newest updates. It's a 2014. This saw runs perfectly, but it is a little, I noticed with this auto tune, when I fire up this saw in the cold, um, it tends to be a little picky. It wants to die sometimes when it's idling. Uh, this one also has that weird size spark plug. Um, it's smaller. Yeah, yeah, well, um, I was gonna look at the spark plug. This saw tends to be a little bit temperature sensitive, guys. Um, just just when it's cold. Um, like right now, it'll probably start again. Let's try starting it with no choke. Nope. Okay, so. I don't know if it's just this saw. Now, I've never put a carb kit in this saw. It, it's probably due for one. That's probably why it's a little picky to get going. But you guys see that there. Now that I've started this thing, it's perfect. I think the auto tune adjusts to the temperature. You can see it's cold in here. Um, other than that, guys, this saw does not run lean. It has a muffler mod though, and so does this one. This saw does not run lean. Um, when it comes to the performance of these guys straight up, these things run like ported saws. They really do. Um, they are tuned for absolute 110% chain speed at all times in the cut. The minute you pull them out of the cut, they force growth. That's been my experience. Um, they seem to be stone dead reliable. I have had no problems with either of these. And this one has a bazillion hours on it. Um, and I've had no problems with it. I did break this strap uh, or this uh, rear AV mount. The updated one has a limiter strap built onto it. Other than that, and I've said it before, the uh, the oil pump gear wore out on this thing. This saw was very abused though. Um, no problems guys. So I hear these things blow up and they get too hot. Uh, I'm gonna say right now, if you keep a sharp chain and, and the right oil, Either of these saws is for you. They run fine and, and they're good saws. Um, th that's been my experience. I have not ported any of these. Uh, everything I hear, they're fine. Uh, I mean, doing a muffler mod on these, if they were gonna lean out, they'd do it with a big muffler mod like I've done to them. Neither of these, they run better with a muffler mod. So um, that's been my experience. Let's see what we got here. Just making sure we're still filming. Okay. Now, just making sure I'm in frame here, guys. I'll just move these around. 
Now, here's another saw. I'm just going to flip these around. Here's another saw that is, some people love them, a lot of people hate them. Now, I have no experience with these guys. I've never run one, so I don't know. But you see, I have two of them here. Uh, we're going to do a failure analysis on one or both of these one day. Okay, I know why these failed, I can just tell. Okay. Here, here's, look at this piston guys. Tell me that didn't get hot. Okay. Pretty dirty in there. Okay, so that one scored, that one got hot. Only hot on the exhaust side though. Let's see about this one. Oh, look at this one. This one's particularly awesomely blown up. Look at that, guys. Oh, there's no cleaning that up. P ring stuck. Okay, so again, um, one of these my buddy gave to me. Uh, he rebuilt one and he said they run really hot, which I don't I don't disagree with, I'm sure they do. Um the other one, I think this one guys, this one, this one I got from a local fella. And uh it sounds like his son was running it or something like that. And I have the bar and chain. Again, we're gonna do a failure analysis on this. Again, this thing was overheated to the point it blew the saw. Off. So uh, another fellow's interpretation of this saw is it would, you know, to, to whoever owned these saws, they'd probably say, yeah, these are no good. And I mean, this saw is a, what year is it? This saw is, this is another 2014, just like the 576. Okay. Um, if this was your saw and you blew it up right away, you probably wouldn't be very impressed with it. Um. I hear these run lean and I hear they run hot. I won't know. I'm going to build one of these guys and try for myself. Again, on this channel, I I really try and only talk about stuff I know about, guys. And uh, I don't know about this. Will it run? I hope so. Maybe we'll port this because why not? Uh, I've had this thing sitting. I've had these sitting on the bench for quite a while. Just find the time and the want to dig into one of these. I will say though. I mean, yeah, there's no cylinder on this, but this thing's light. Like, if we could dig into this and make it run cooler and not so lean, why not? I bet you this thing would be a potent little saw. Uh, I get asked, have I ever run one of these? I've never run a Mark II, guys. Um, I don't even know if those are available in my area yet, but um, I think these would be good saws. So what I'm saying, guys, is uh, all three of these saws were blown up. Uh, this one was blown up when my buddy got it. This one was blown up when I got it. And these two were blown up. Does that mean that these saws are not reliable? <sighs> I might get flamed for this, but most of the blown up saws that come across my bench are blown up because somebody overheated them with a doll chain. Um... The 461 was blown up because of a dull chain. I, I mean, I could go on and on, guys. I'm trying to think of other saws. Uh, this saw was blown up because it had a dull chain. So, my experience with these guys, they're awesome. They're not my favorite, but that's because I like vintage stuff, whether it's saws or music or anything. But for the average guy that maybe isn't Johnny on the screwdriver, that that possibly cuts these are these are a great saw for the professional i got a lot of hours on this guys and and i'm i'm pretty impressed with it uh i hear the bearings tend to go in these or i hear anecdotal things about the bearings these both needed bottom ends as far as i'm concerned these bottom ends are fine these were burnt up on the top um so i don't know i can't speak to that um I'm just going to keep flogging on this 562 till it grenades one day and it won't owe me a penny. Um, I've cut truckload after truckload after truckload of firewood with just that saw and uh, it's great. 
the 576, I guess I'm saving it for a rainy day, but same thing. That saw is a monster. For a stock saw, um, that thing pulls chain with authority um, very, very well. I'm, I'm quite impressed with it. So there you guys go. Um, let's see what, let's see how much, what we're up to here for time. Oh, that's not too, too bad. But yeah, there you guys go. Um, you guys ask me about auto tunes quite often. Um, this is what I know. I don't have, I've never owned an Mtronic still. I'm sure they're good too, but these saws run a little bit warm. It's the design of new saws, guys. All new saws run warm. And if you don't, if you don't keep a sharp chain, um, I have a feeling that all these new saws will grenade on you. If you keep a sharp chain and you run good oil through them, I, I think these saws can be just as reliable. They don't tolerate abuse like old stuff does. But let's be honest, guys. Do old trucks tol or do new trucks tolerate abuse like old trucks do or old machinery? I mean, let's be honest, guys. They don't make stuff like they used to. And uh, that's the world we live in. But if you maintain these, keep a clean air filter, good fuel and oil, and a sharp chain. I really like auto tunes, guys. And uh, I'm going to continue to run them because they're they're good. They're light. And for doing tree line work and stuff where I'm walking a lot, I don't have to carry fuel with this thing. Because this saw, this saw will run probably twice as long as any saw that I own on a tank of fuel. Um, and there's something to be said for that. And I mean, realistically, that is close to the power of an older 70cc saw. It doesn't quite have the torque, but it has the chain speed. So if you're cutting softwood, um, this thing will hang with any 70cc saw, uh, stock, of course. Uh, once you need torque, of course, the bigger saw is going to, you're, you're going to feel it. Um, this thing. I want to put some more time on this guys, but I mean, this is a good power saw. I know they're often maligned and people don't like them, but I do. Uh, the 576 is, is a really, really strong saw and uh, I like them. It's not a 372, but uh, it's cool in its own right. The one drawback to these guys, they're a little piggy. Um, this thing's got some weight, um, definitely has some weight, but it is what it is, right? Okay, that's well, Friday night in the shop. Uh, tomorrow morning we're going to do more shop work and uh, try and finish some projects and get some things started and uh, just have a blast. Anyhow guys, as always I appreciate you guys coming to hang out with me in my little, my little slice of the world. And uh, again, thank you for all the emails, uh, everybody that's offering to help out the channel and uh, just good to be here guys I really appreciate it and uh, let's have fun this year uh, we need a little more fun uh, when life gets serious it's nice to just be able to turn YouTube on and forget about life's troubles so if I can be a part of that that's awesome anyhow as always thanks for watching take her easy later guys